Here are the rules for checking yourself. The number of poles equals the sum of the number of independent capacitor voltages plus the number of independent inductor currents. Now you would ask what is an independent capacitor voltage and what is an independent inductor current? The number of independent capacitor voltages equals the number of capacitors minus the number of independent loops of capacitors or capacitors and voltage sources. Now what is an independent loop? Next question. The number of independent loops of capacitors oh, or capacitor and voltage sources equals the number of capacitors and or voltage sources that must be removed from the network to break all the loops. And that would give you what you call the tree of a network. It is the tree of network is a graph in which all the nodes are connected by branches, but there are no loops. That's called the tree of a network. So and then we go to the inductor currents. The number of independent inductor current equals the number of inductors minus the number of independent cut sets of inductors and inductors and current sources. What are independent inductor currents? The number of independent cut sets of inductors and, uh, and inductors and current sources equal the number of inductors and current sources that need to be replaced in a network to obtain a connected graph, a tree again, after all elements of those cut sets have been removed. Well, I can imagine you don't recall it anymore, um, but we will have an example later on. The number of poles at zero frequency equals the number of independent cut sets of capacitors and capacitors and current sources, plus the number of independent loops of inductors, inductors and voltage sources. Well, and then we have already defined what are independent loops and what are independent cut sets. So let's do it. Here, I have an example. I have an example with seven capacitors and we need to answer the following questions. How many capacitors do I have? How many independent loops of capacitors and voltage sources. If I subtract that from the number of capacitors, I have the number of poles. And now maybe I can also tell something about the number of poles in the origin. And that is, the, then I need to lo look at the cut sets of capacitors and capacitors in current sources. So let's do it step by step. I have seven capacitors. That is already, sim that's just simple counting. How many independent loops of capacitor and voltage sources? You see, I need to remove three capacitors before all loops of capacitors and voltage sources are broken. And I have the three of the network remaining. So there are no loops of capacitors and in voltage sources anymore. That's what we have to look at. So how many poles do I have then? Well, si seven minus three is four. Seven capacitors, four poles. How many independent cut sets do I have? What is a cut set? A cut set is you remove a number of branches and it will give you an isolated subnetwork. Well, we have three possibilities here. I have three possibilities. You see, if I remove those branches, then I have three isolated networks. But are they independent? The rule says, how many elements do I have to place back in the network before I have a tree? And that's only two. I here place the current source and the capacitor, and now all nodes are connected again. There's no floating nodes anymore of the network. And so I have two independent cut sets of capacitors or of capacitors and current sources, which means that I have two poles in the origin four poles and two poles in the origin. Zeros. Zeros are complex frequencies at which, there, at which there is no transfer. Zero transfer. So procedure for finding zeros. If there is a short in parallel with the signal path at some complex frequency, then there can be no transfer. Or if there is an open circuit in series with the signal path, there also can be no transfer. And it can be that we have multiple paths for a transfer, but those transfers of those multiple paths cancel at some complex frequency. 
Let's see if we can make some examples. Short circuit in parallel with the signal path at some complex frequency. Here, if the source is Vs and the detector is about a, across the series connection of R2 and C1, then you see we have a short. If the impedance constituted by R2 in series with C1 is zero. So if R2 plus one over SC1 equals zero, give you S equals minus one over uh, R, R2C1. So that's the frequency of the zero. Here, if the series connection of R2 and L1 constitutes a short circuit at some complex frequency, of course, this is not a frequency you find on your generator. It's a solution of S. So here we have S equals R2 divided by L1 with a minus sign. Here, a short at zero frequency. And here, a short at two complex uh, frequencies, complex conjugated. So when C1 plus R2 plus L1, those three elements together constitute a short circuit, then we have a zero. Next one, open circuit in series with the signal path at some complex frequency. Here, in order to have an open circuit in series with the signal path, we need to have a parallel branch of which the conductance of one element cancels the conductance of the other element. So the conductance through this capacitor is SC1, and the conductance of the resistor is 1 over R1. So if 1, if one over R1 plus SC1 equals 0, we have a 0. So you see, if we are looking in parallel with the signal path, we talk about series connections. If we are looking about in series with the signal path, we talk about parallel connection. Here you see the conductance through R1 cancels the admittance of L1. Here we have a zero at zero frequency, and here we have a zero at two complex conjugated frequencies. Multiple transmissions. So let's say we have an input output system here and two transfers, then you can simply add them and you see that, and that is not easy to estimate, but you can calculate it, that there will be zeros defined by all the, by the numerator and the denominator of all the transfers. 